Come in, come in. You know Donald? Yeah, we've met. Absolutely. Hello. Hi, I'm Corky Normart, and uh, we're in my my new studio space, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have about my art and what I've tried to accomplish. I know this is new and it's smaller than your other one, but let's see what, how you work. Well, this is a table my my cousin made for me, and uh, the beauty of it is we've got big heavy drawers and I can handle all my watercolor materials in this drawer. So, so, so you've gone from a big full studio. A full, yeah, full room studio, but I had a table a little bigger than this. So I'm used to painting this way, you know, raising up the, raising the, the, the stretch and it works out pretty good. Is this your painting on the back wall? That's my painting. That's from years ago. That's Balboa. So you started out as a watercolor. First mm. you were a commercial artist. Is that right? Well, I was doing watercolors even before then. Uh -huh. I, I was doing watercolors uh, even before high school. And, and then you were doing commercial art. Did you work for the Fresno Bee at one Fresno time? Fresno Bee for a couple of years. That was my first job. TV, actually, for a year, and then the general art room. So, and then I went to Denver as an art director for almost a year. And I came back and started my agency in Fresno. So, no, I went to Channel 30. Channel 30 as an art director, and then started my agency. So but I've been painting the whole time. So let's take a look at some of your paintings. Well, I, th these are just a couple. These are the two I've done here. I've done three. One of them I won't even show you. But these are, I, I haven't painted much here for some reason. And they're not quite there, but at least I was doing something. This little one, is that a new one? That's a new one. Looks good. You don't think that's finished? Yes, yeah, done. Oh, okay. And what what is it? What's the subject matter? The subject matter is Gaze Harbor. And I'll show you what it's from in my bedroom. It's from one of Gay McLean's paintings. It kind of inspires me. And I don't know how close it is, but at least it was a starting point. And for those who don't know uh, Gay McLean, can you well, Gay tell was us about a, it? a local architect and, and teacher at City College. I think the the finest watercolorist that I've ever known. But if he'd been in San Francisco or LA or Atlanta or anywhere, he would have been nationally recognized. His stuff is just, never saw him do a bad painting. That's wonderful. Yeah, he, he, he really had it, so. And we painted together for years and years. We both started together with Rollin way, way back. And that would be Rollin Pickford. Yeah. And we'd paint every weekend, Saturdays, Sundays. Some days we'd do three paintings a piece. You know, uh, it was just, uh, it was great. And Roland, of course, inspired us and kept us going and, and was a, a great critic. And so it was a, a lot of fun. Corky, tell me about this painting. What is that? That's, oh, that's... Uh, it looks almost Asian. That's uh, down on, on Shepherd uh, by Alluvial before there were any homes there. And that was a, a green and blue farmhouse. Was, and we'd been painting out there on a Sunday and it was late, late, late. And this was my, this took about 15 minutes. It was my last painting that day. Uh-huh. And you just it's did great. it, you know. Are these it's so minimal compared to yeah. take a look at that. Yeah. Well, well I didn't have much time, 15 minutes. I couldn't do much more of that. A, a friend of mine w wants, I'll show you one on the computer uh, of uh, the Kings River that I, I sold recently. And he saw it. He'd like one like it. And it's a sunset. That's what all of these are. I, I brought these along to show him. And they're all, you know, they're all with the sun going down. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I love the sunsets. I think the sunsets, especially for watercolor, are, are really great. That was 
was Norvart Cycle, and he was a great fisherman, so they, I've got a picture somewhere. They would go to Mendota and back daily. That was a big deal in those days, to go fishing in Mendota and come back. So that they'd meet at the Cycle Inn and drive on out there. That's Gaze Harbor. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? And you, you see it here, the, these are, to me, these are boats. Uh-huh. And it's compositionally great, I think. But they could be a, could be a farm building, it could be whatever, but it's the composition of the large, middle, and small, and the detail is here in the small, so. Uh, but his color is wonderful, too. Oh, you know, he was great. This is what I gave my wife, Janice, when she was at USC. There's the DG house and Tommy Trojan, and these are all the places we went when we were dating in Los Angeles. So what year was that? 59. Nice memories. Yeah, that was a clincher when she got that, that did it. Do you ever compose on a computer? Uh, not not paintings, but I, I do, uh, you know, sculptures. Yeah. I do that a lot. It's just sold at the Sense of Place Gallery. Tell us how you got started in working with glass. A friend of mine took a class in uh, Los Angeles from one of the pioneers in, in Dal de Vera, you know, faceted glass. And he'd done a... a a work that I really enjoyed, and uh, we did one together at uh, St. Columba. There was a window in the chapel there that was done with shower door glass, I thought, <laughs> and I asked Bernie Flynn, the, the priest there, that if I could do a window, he said, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I didn't get nervous until I tore the old one out. <laughs> I'd never done one before, and it came out quite good, so it was that was my first one, and then I've been doing them quite a few how different many, churches. How many uh, churches have you worked with? I don't know, maybe a dozen, 10 to a dozen, I'm not sure. Are most I, of them here in Fresno? Most of them are here, one up by Modesto, uh, Los Vanos. Uh Yeah, most are, are in, right here in uh, the hospitals. It's It's not... They're not like uh, what we usually associate with the idea of stained glass. No, you, you it's use not it. single pane stained glass with lead holding it together. It's inch thick glass that is held together with epoxy. So the negative spaces can be much bigger, as big as you want them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's, it's a strong, it's a stronger piece of art than, than regular stained glass with the leaded. And the leaded is so precise, it's not me at all. I mean, I'd go crazy trying to keep everything that tight. I mean, my art, no matter what I do, is, is loosey-goosey. I mean, happy accidents are what happen, especially with watercolor. I mean, I'll start out with no plan at all and let the, the paint kind of decide what's going to happen and then take it from there. Mm -hmm. So. I remember I did a a piece with you at, when I was at the B where we did a little tour of of your works. Uh, you you picked some of your favorites. Do you have a favorite stained glass in I this area know. in the Fresno uh, area? I got to think about it. I think Children's Hospital, the uh, the uh, the chapel at Children's Hospital only because I had a chance to do the whole thing, design the room and the round seating and the round uh, ceiling and all that. So that was a fun one, not just for the glass. As far as the glass alone goes, I, I don't know. I just, I gotta tell, I'm not happy completely with any of them. I mean, if I had them to do over again, I, uh, even the Holy Sepulchre, if I had it to do over again, there's some things I would have changed. I don't think you can be, if you start getting satisfied with what you've done, you might as well paint by numbers because uh, th there's always a way to do it better or differently or more exciting. <laughs>
Glass, that thick glass in yes. your windows, but you also do some uh, freestanding ones, like at the Woodward Library. Oh yes, the wood, yes, I've done a number of uh, the Woodward Library. Where else? The uh, uh, Ed Cashin's uh, uh, courtyard at his offices. But did you do one for the juvenile hall? Yes, the juvenile hall, mm -hmm. uh, the Armenian home. So you mentioned uh, that church in Jerusalem. Would you tell us how you, I know, here you are, you start out as a, as a watercolor, you're a commercial artist in a way, then you go into glass. And advertising. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you are in Jerusalem. Brother Donald Van Seer was the principal at San McKee Memorial. And my nieces and nephews all went there. We're not Catholic, but they are now, but they weren't. They went there for the football team. <laughs> In any event, they went there and we got, to, Brother Donald was the principal and we got to know him almost as a member of our extended family. We were always together at all the holidays and whatnot. And uh, Brother Donald, when he left Fresno, ended up in, in Jerusalem as head of the Jerusalem Middle Eastern Office of the Pontifical Mission to Palestine. And they did philanthropic work throughout the Middle East. And he was there, I think, for seven or eight years. And uh, he asked, the, the, the anniversary, the 2000th anniversary was coming up. And the Dome of the Rock, the Muslim Dome of the Rock, was had just been gilded in gold. And the Holy Sepulchre was disaster. I mean, it had been... Uh, Hit, hit by a shell and burned during the War of Independence. This really war of never been fixed. They tried to they fixed it and then they put a a floor over the at the bottom of the dome with scaffolding. Ugly. I've got a picture somewhere of it. And uh, he asked each of the custodians separately because the three heads of the church in Jerusalem never. Had never spoken to you. They just never saw each other. What what faith were they? The Armenian, Armenian, uh, uh, Franciscan, and Greek. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the holy places are controlled by the Greeks, or the Holy Sepulchre at least, controlled by the Greeks, 65 percent. But the dome is one of the areas that is controlled equally by all three. The Turks did that because they, the biggest problem they had in governing for 400 years was solving the problem between the Christian churches. Same thing with the English, when the English just couldn't have, I have a letter somewhere that uh, they, they just said it's impossible, we can't solve the problems. And even I saw reports of fights on the floor of the church between priests from the three different uh, denominations. I mean, so anyhow, they they had uh, Don asked each of them separately, and they all said, "Well, we've tried to get something done, but we can't agree. If you could find somebody, we'd like to see something done." So Donald first uh, got uh, financing from a, a gentleman he knew in New York, who would finance it, fund it, and then he called me, and I thought it would be a glass project because that's all I'd done in religious work and he said can you be in Jerusalem in two weeks <laughs> I said okay so and I had no idea that we knew where Christ had been entombed they don't do that in Charlton Heston movies don't go any further than the you know explosion of life so I went there and uh, saw what it was and uh, that's how it started did you have to submit your design, and did they then? Have I did. Opinion? I did forty-two designs, I think, and I think they took number thirty-eight. Number thirty-eight. I did three very quick little watercolor sketches that I were so loose and so, but they gave me. I threw them away. I don't have any more. And uh, that's they. They took the uh, number thirty-eight was the one they took, the one I developed, and. Uh, 
That was that was it. Well, let's take a mm. look at it over here. From rim to rim, it's 90 feet. Yeah, that's 90 feet. It's 120 some feet in the air, and uh, the the gold is 23 karat gold. And as a matter of fact, here's one of the stars. Because those little figures are not mine. I think I can get this without bringing anything. This is one of the small stars. One of these, this bottom row. Oh. So is it, are they painted gold? Well, they've got gold in the middle and they're, they're painted. Uh -huh. uh, and that's, that's part of the whole other problem about some of the problems we had here. But uh, they couldn't figure out how to do this. So I had these made in Clovis and uh -huh. shipped them to them. Things got a little out of hand. They ran out of money. They missed. They, they they got so far out it was crazy and so they started doing things. They did one thing. I wanted gold in the middle. And it's gold, you can't see it here, but they just slopped the gold on instead of carefully laying it on and things like that that bothered me. But it's done. It's so beautiful and and, and, and it, in its simplicity and yet it's... Yeah, yeah. Well, I had other ideas, but I found out I was going to put the Greeks don't allow crosses in there. Whatever they do, I guess, for some reason. And so, no, I I thought it came out fine. It, it's obviously the, uh, this is a great, you know, my thought was when I first heard what it was. Jesus was buried on the third day. He rose again and ascended into heaven. Well, he had to have gone up through there. <laughs> so I figured that's a good place to do it. And uh, the the main rays, you know, the 12, and uh, there are thin lines. You can't, you, know, you can hardly see them. Thin three lines for the, the, the three, the triumphant. And then the explosion of light. And I've got... Uh, indirect lighting behind it and there's lighting here supposed to have shined up and that never got done properly but still are you pleased with it when you when you first yeah, saw but, it but there's still some things that you know obviously this would have been different uh you can't see it from here and nobody would know but there, visually, you can see one of the connections from the ground. You can see where it's bolted into the wall, and I didn't want that. But nobody's noticed it. One of the young engineers from uh, uh, Bethlehem pointed it out to me, and that shouldn't have happened. But uh, no, I, I think it's. But you never know, you know. Uh, th these arches, we had nothing planned for this. And about halfway through, they opened the rear door and found these old uh, pieces of metal and, and we regilded them and put them in. That space is owned by the Greeks. And the Greeks said, well, we're gonna do mosaics in there. I said, oh my God, you know, totally destroy everything, put lights on it. Found all of this material and they put it in, it was fine, it worked just fine. We did wire these with lights inside of these little hanging lanterns. So, but the lights never go on. They don't. How do they operate with three different um, plays trying to run? Well, they don't operate. They, they do very little. I was told by one of the Monsignors that this was the first time in 200 years that they had agreed unanimously on any discretionary matter. That was probably the miracle of the whole thing. <laughs> they had no choice. On other things where they had a choice, they never would agree. They'd get things done if they had to. It was going to fall down if they didn't do it. But uh, this was the first time they'd, they'd agreed in 200 years. So that was, that was good. So all three of the faiths agreed on Plan 38? Yeah, yeah, on the presentation. Yeah, I did a, I did a model. I, 
I, I can't do the illustration the way it should have been done. So my, my, I've always done that. All my sculptures, I've done models. So I did a model and it was about, I put it on, made a plastic frame for it. It went up on top. It's at the college now in the archives. And uh, I took that with me and uh, had them all, all three of the custodians, one by one, told them to walk in, sit down, it had a black curtain around it. And it was all lit by batteries because I was afraid of using the electricity there because it might blow up. So it was all, I told them, go in, sit down, don't look up till you're seated. These are guys that are never told to do anything. They, <laughs> and they each go in and sit and they all did the same thing. They sit down and look up and they all, there was a smile on their face. When that happened, I knew we had them and they, they accepted it unanimously and that was it. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like your background in advertising, an advertising agency, helped you out. Well, that's what Brother Donald said. He's got that. I've got a booklet somewhere. I can get you a copy. He said his, his background and ability to sell ideas is, is important. So it's uh, like a client. You do a bunch of yeah, different sure. proposals. You have, a, you have a creative idea, but you've got to sell it to the client. And if it's not red because that's his wife's favorite color, you probably don't get it done. But that's, yeah, that was one of the, the conditions. Thank you.